this is David. We're going to continue our conversation about Microsoft Cognitive Services, and particularly the Vision API of those cognitive services. And this time we're going to talk about turning pictures of words into words themselves, generally what's called optical character recognition. So let's go back up here to Microsoft.com slash cognitive. And easy to remember URL that directs to this longer URL. And we'll again dive into the vision category here and the computer vision API. In earlier videos, we looked specifically at analyzing an image, coming back with information about an image. But now we want to look at pictures of text and turn them into text. You can see here, sorry, have a nice day, oops, see you soon, came back with this data right here. And it's actually in a uh, JSON format. What you can see here is some information about whether or not it succeeded, whether it's finished or not. But that here's the important part. This is the results right here. What we get is an array of lines. And within each line, we get a bound, a bounding box. And that's essentially the, the uh, for a given line, it would be the x, y coordinates of the four corners around that. So if you wanted to do something with that, maybe highlight that line or block it out or whatever, you could do so using some code. You have that information right here. So that's a line. And within each line, we have an array of words right here. First line just has the word sorry. And it only has one word in it, but let's let's pick one right here. This is a lines with quite a few words in them. So, for example, line three has this pole has been reinforced. Let's take a look at that and go down to here's our array of lines. And if we go down to the third line here, these x y coordinates will define a rectangle around that line. There's the text of it, and here's each word in the box. This poll has been. For each word, we not only get the word itself, but we also get a bounding box around the word bean, for example. Did a pretty good job here. This is this this word is uh, has a lot of kerning going on in there. And you'll see that that generally the more the better the quality uh, of the image, the better it's able to do optical character recognition. So we can call this service and get information like that. Here's something really similar. This is a, a, a different endpoint we call, but it's specifically designed for handwriting here. Our greatest glory is not is in never failing, but in rising every time we fall, and does a really good job of that. But the results are really the same format. An array of lines that indicates an array bounding box around each line, the text of that line, and then individually each word with a bounding box of that word right here. Now if we want to dive down into actually using this, what we'll want to do is go up to the top here and click on API and select OCR for this right here. And this tells us exactly how to use that endpoint. It's it's a simple REST call. We, we scroll up here. We will post to an HTTP endpoint, and that HTTP endpoint is right here, HTTPS colon whack whack. In this case, it's West US, but that might change depending upon where exactly the, 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 the what region, which region we create our cognitive services, but the rest, api.cognitive.microsoft.com slash vision slash v2o slash OCR, that will remain the same. And then we can specify in our query string um, the language and whether or not to detect orientation. And that's defined right down here language, all of these languages are supported, and then detect orientation is a true or a false if we want to make sure, if we want to be able to support text that's been tilted away from the horizontal, we may will add that to true so it'll be smart enough to try to straighten it out first before doing anything like that. We also have the our headers, and the headers are exactly the same as what we saw in the computer vision analyze image service content type, which refers to are we going to send a, the, the image itself, in which case we'll either set the content type to application octet stream or multi-part form data, and then send the image in the body. Or if we want to send just a, just a pointer to the image somewhere online, we'll set the content type to application slash JSON, and in the body we'll set the, the, the we'll set the send in the body of the URL and uh, the word URL and the actual URL of the image in this JSON format right here. And then also we also need this subscription key, which we can get from Azure simply by going create a resource, 
AI machine learning, computer vision, and then fill this out here. DG test computer vision. Give it whatever name we want as long as it's unique. What region do we want to put it in? That will actually affect the URL. West US is fine. Pricing tier, do we want the free one or the paid one? The free one has some limitations. We only call it 20 times per minute. So probably not good if you want to build an iPhone app, for example, and put it in a resource group. DG test CSRG. How about that for disemboweling that thing? And create that right there. It'll go out there and then a matter of seconds it'll actually create something like this and then we'll have a key a subscription key and we'll have a, a URL endpoint that we can call that'll be just ours our own so that's right here we can come back into the uh, we can test that right here here's West US right here and we can specify a language you can use unknown it'll auto detect the language but uh, we'll grab English here, detect orientation, yeah, true is fine, doesn't matter. Um, uh, subscription key, we'll grab that out of here, is that done? Sure enough it is. And our keys, everybody close your eyes, I'm gonna look at these keys right here. I'll grab this one, you don't have to close your eyes, I'll delete this as soon as I'm done. And I can just paste that right into here. And then I can specify the text of an image. And I could go out and find an image right here. I'll just search for uh, how about love letter images right there. I'll find something like uh, how about that one? That looks good. Copy that and paste it into here. So this will be the body URL colon that. And if we look down here and you can see this is the request I'm going to make to this URL right here. Uh, westus.api.microsoft, blah, 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 etc. Here's query string, language equals English, detector orientation equals true. I probably don't need that. It looks like this is pretty much horizontal. I could probably set that to false. It'll be a little bit faster. And here's the request in detail. If you want to do this thing in Postman or Twit or Fiddler, um, you'd post it to here. Um, and uh, the content type, this is in the header application JSON. The API key, they've blocked it out here, but I've already shown it to you guys because I trust you. And this is the body URL colon that right there. I'll click on send. It'll actually post it to there. It was really quick. It came back with a 200. 200 is good. Whenever you make a HTTP request, if you get a 200 back, that means okay. It, it happened. Everything that worked is according to the plan. If you got something that started with 400 or 500, that means there was an error, but we didn't. And in the body of our response, we got things like the orientation and some bounding boxes and so on right here. So uh, let's take a look at this and see how it worked. Um, so the first uh, the first line, not so good. It looks like uh, Q Fage. Let me take a look at this and see what I got here. Oh, probably this right here. It didn't. Oh, it's this line right here. I think it did really poorly at. But dear to let's let's go down to that. We can maybe ignore the first part and see how it did once. Dear to express the love that I feel for you is quite difficult for words. So let's do that. And here, dear to express the love that I feel for you. did a really good job once we get past that first part right here. And every one of these words has a bounding box in here. So that's line one. Here's line two. Quite difficult for words are not enough to, etc. So that's how we can use it in a service call. Now let's take a look at how we can use this in an actual application. If we go back to the API right here, notice down the do bottom of the documentation where it talked about all these things, we have uh, some samples, curl, C sharp, Java, JavaScript. Let's build a JavaScript application right here. And in this, I have an HTML page. I have a drop down with a whole bunch of pictures of poems on here. And I also have a, uh, a language setting here. And I have a, a place to show the picture and somewhere a div right here where I can display the output. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I have all my script 
right here in this JavaScript file. So let me show it to you first how this works. I'll just bring this up right here. And here we have a picture. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see it better. Actually, I want to zoom out. Um, oh, actually, it's not too bad. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, famous Robert Frost poem, Two Roads Diverged in Yellowwood. Sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood, etc. cetera. Uh, it's English. I'll click on Get Text, and it'll show me down at the bottom here the, the what it thinks the text is. And you can notice that two became TiVo, Rose Diverging Yellow. Uh, so, and that's because there's a little bit of kerning going on right here. So it's imperfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the code, how we do that. In this code, what I do is I've got a uh, reference. I'm doing a little jQuery here. You know, I'm the last person in the world that actually still uses jQuery, but I like it. Um, I get a reference to this output div. That's where my text is going to go. Just put the word thinking in there. I get a reference to this uh, the, the value the user selected in the dropdown, which image they want. In this case, it points to a Robert Frost poem or a picture of one. Same thing with which dropdown language they selected. Uh, English was the one I did the last one. I get the key. I've hidden that over here so I can... Uh, share this a little bit more easily and just delete that get key file. Uh, make sure that if there's not, if there is no key, that it displays an error. Uh, and then I go on here, I've got the web service URL right here. This has to match my what I've created inside of Azure. Uh, the key and the URL must match. And I add on the query string language equals language. And here in jQuery, this is how you post, how you post to a URL. Post to this URL up here. In the headers, I pass in the key, and the content type is application JSON. In the body, I have the word URL followed by a colon followed by the URL it's of the image that was selected. It's all asynchronous, so when I get a callback, that's when this happens right here, the done, and this data right here is the data that came from that callback. And that's what I do, is I loop through every line in here, and uh, within every line, I loop through every word in here, and I output all that information right here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just appending. I have a div, and I just append what uh, each line to it. So I wrap up every line inside of another div. I wrap up, I separate every word with by a space right here. So all this code is available out of my GitHub repository. You can take a look at it. But what will happen is that it'll then just, once I have this, output div I've appended and you'll be able to see what happened uh, with an HR with a, a horizontal rule at the bottom of it so let's take a look at this again and this time I am going to uh, use a different poem let's see here's Longfellow that's fine this was a little bit better quality get text right here thinking and there we go and this does a little bit better job because the text is much larger um, let me find some like this Shakespeare one I think actually has a really poor, it's dark background. You can see the other text on the other side is bleeding through. It's got this big letter M. I know that causes problems right here, right here. And so, you know, the, actually this looks like it's wrong, but it came out right. You know, the old days people would make the S's look like F's. And that's what's going on here. My mistress eyes are nothing like the sun, even the word sun, which is spelled in some old English style. Let's try it also with a language. This is Spanish right here. And if I scroll down I can, to the right, I can actually see it's a poem in Spanish. And I'll grab that text, and you can see that it actually was smart enough to figure it out in Spanish. This works for so this French poem right here. It's a really good job with that because the text is really nice and separated. And uh, even in Japanese, which is a totally different character set, I think you'll be amazed at how accurate that is. It actually displayed it in its appropriate character set. So using this, these demos and this video, I've shown you how to use the computer vision to perform the optical character recognition by calling a cognitive services web service. This is David. Thank you for watching.